Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Brian Kahn, and we're going to be going into a webinar tonight together titled Using the MetaTrader 4 Platform to Build Trading Plans. You can see there my consulting company, jupiterpeakfinancial.com, a new website where you can go to find out more information about me as well as additional market commentary webinars and articles that I provide on a regular basis. You have my email address there if you have any questions and you have the website there dailyforextradingedge.com which is IBFX's, part of IBFX's great educational content where my commentary gets posted to. Before we get into uh, um, the slides tonight, we'll do a disclaimer, but even before I go there, again, any questions that you have, please type them in. I'll try and check back and check the panel here and make sure that I answer those questions throughout the broadcast. I'll leave this disclaimer up for you to review. And again, no uh, buy, hold, or sell recommendations. Everything we're using here tonight is for educational purposes only. Um, I'll be talking about various uh, fundamental and technical factors um, and showing you some different examples. And again, they are by no means any form of recommendation. The outline of where we're going tonight, a quick fundamental catch-up just because the fundamental news has been so important for traders to be aware of. So we'll talk about some of the big events and then some of the smaller events that might be affecting a specific pair. Then we'll go into technical analysis and then the meat of tonight's website will be placing, pooling, and managing trades using the software. Um, talk a little bit about your opportunity when it comes to education and then just a quick review. So fundamental analysis, I like to catch you up. So these webinars take place every two weeks, and I also provide commentary about four days per week. I write commentary on my website and that dailyforextradingedge.com website, and that's a great way of keeping informed of what's going on fundamentally and technically on a daily basis. So fundamentally what's going on right now is um, an economic calendar that we're used to using that gives us inflation data, retail sales data, unemployment data, consumer confidence data for all the different regions of the world um, is taking a back seat. It's taking a back seat to central banks around the world who are working separately and in conjunction with each other to buoy the equity markets to keep an accommodative policy where interest rates are low, borrowing rates are then low, and so that that is trying to ensure more growth and stimulus and so the equity markets are doing well. Why is it important to understand what the equity markets are doing? Well, if, been, if you've been reading my regular commentary, then you are well aware of what volatility is doing and we'll be able to take a look at that in just a moment. So ways for you to take advantage and stay on top of this fundamental analysis that is having an impact on the markets, use your broker. They have a link to a great website, forexfactory.com. We're going to go there. Use me and my commentary. Use CNBC. You might have some version of that, depending on where you are around the world. Use Bloomberg, which is streaming um, on the T for your TV. You can stream it over the internet, and you can go to Bloomberg.com. And then, obviously, there's other multiple, um, or definitely a lot of other market sites that you may be using. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause here and switch applications so that we go can go over to um, the Forex Factory. Uh, program uh, or site very quickly. So Forex Factory, it's right here. It's an economic calendar. Again, Forex is the key word there. So it's giving you all the different currencies around the world, the euro, the pound, the United States dollar, New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, and so on and so forth. So you should be able to see that. Tomorrow, a pretty big event. Um, a lot of people are going to be keeping an eye on it. So if I go to this week and I click on the weekly view calendar so that we can see the entire week, Sunday through Saturday, you can see that we're scrolling down to Thursday, September 13th, and tomorrow we have FOMC economic project projections in the FOMC statement. So that's the Federal Open Market Committee, otherwise known as the Federal Reserve. Uh, so that's Ben Bernanke. They're going to either raise rates, lower rates, keep rates the same, 
but no matter what, even if they don't touch rates, they um, will be releasing a statement, and that statement could include maybe some quanti quantitative easing. I don't think we have to get too much into why they're doing these easing with, from central banks and also talking about elections and political things going on around the world. But the point is we know that it's happening and we know that equity markets have been absolutely roaring and roaring and roaring for the most part around the world as of late, especially uh, in the United States. So what that means for volatility, like I said, traders, you, a lot of you might be day traders, intraday traders. Volatility is a good thing for us as traders. Well, I'm going to bring up a chart for you. I'm going to bring up a chart for you of the volatility gauge. And this is a long-term chart. Here's 2009, and then things started to settle down. And in 2009, the markets rallied. In 2010, the markets rallied. 2011, the markets rallied. 2012, the markets rallied. And you can see VIX has basically gotten lower and lower and lower. The peaks have gotten lower. And we are pretty much as low as we have been in the past five years down in the 14, 13 area. So what this means is that the volatility index is kind of like a fear and uncertainty and anxiety index. And so basically, people are saying there is no fear out there, there is no uncertainty out there, there is no anxiety. Even though unemployment rates haven't changed in America, even though they're, they were riding in the streets a year ago in Europe and things really haven't gotten much better, things have gotten way worse, the unemployment picture there, Global growth is definitely slowing. The economic calendar is telling us that, but the economic calendar is taking a back seat because everyone's saying everything is fine. Equity markets are going to the moon. Volatility is going down. And for the most part, when volatility goes down, trading ranges get smaller. So that starts to come into effect with your frequency of trading and how many pips you can go for. And I wrote about that in my market commentary last Thursday and Friday when the ECB went, met. Equ equity ranges were huge. Trading ranges in Forex were huge. Then on Monday, back to normal markets, quote unquote normal, where equity markets were sideways, small range, and Forex was in a small range. So we had small ranges in Forex on Monday. Tuesday was a little bit better in Forex. Wednesday, today, equity markets were up for the most part. Quiet day ahead of the Federal Reserve. And again, very range bound markets in foreign currencies. And I'll show that to you. So here's the picture of the equity markets um, over. The, just since uh, late last year, October, November, December, and then January of 2012 moving forward. And that's a big uptrend. A little bit of a dip here in April and May, but then we started going up and up and up. And remember, the markets have been going up and up and up. This is a huge percentage move, 127 up to 145. That's almost 20 points. 20 points of $127 entity is 16%. We've done 16% in a few months, and, ec and economic data around the world has gotten worse and worse and worse. So keep that in mind that the markets are kind of being artificially buoyed by these central banks, but that's the point. It's happening. They're doing it, and we, as, we, uh, we have to recognize that as traders. All right. So let me just jump back into the slides. And then we're going to move from these equity markets and we're going to move into the Forex markets and give you some trading education and placing and pooling and managing trades in the MetaTrader 4 um, software. So that's your fundamental analysis or that's my opinion of what's going on fundamentally and a little bit technically. So technically, what are trends? Equity markets are trending up. Um, support, resistance, not really much support and resistance as we keep trending up and up and up and up. Intermarket relationships, that comes into some of my webinars. Um, I'll always talk about relationships between gold and oil and some of the commodity currencies such as the Canadian and the US dollar and the Canadian, the Aussie dollar and the United States dollar. Not, we're, we're not going to go too much into that today. It might come out in one of our trading plans, but just be aware that I am big and very keen on intermarket relationships helping with trading plans. So technical analysis overall, equity markets up, volatility down, more range bound for the most part for Forex. So moving into placing trades, and this is where we will jump into the Forex markets. Two ways to place trades, two ways to enter trades. All right, You can use a market order to get in at that very moment, or you can use a limit order saying, I'm going to try and get in at this price, and, or get, whether I want to get in a little bit below the market and buy it a little bit below the market, or I want to get short the market a little bit above the market. But keep in mind, 
that limit orders really get hit and get filled at market. So there is no guarantee. No matter what order type I'm telling you here, there's no guarantee what price you get filled at. That has to do with the speed of the market and volatility of the market. So if I want to get in as fast as possible, I can do market. If I want to get out as fast as possible, I can do market. If I want to get in somewhere at a better price than where the market is at right now or try to, I can put in a limit order with no guarantees. And then the same thing for exit, I can put a limit order to get out if I'm short and I want to get out and for a gain, I can put a limit below where the market is and hopefully it'll go and hit my order. Or if I'm long the market, I can put a limit above the market and hopefully it will go and get my order. But again, with a little bit of slippage, um, with fast markets, there are no guarantees of what price you actually get. I want that to be clear. I'm not giving you any orders that guarantee an entry or an exit price. Again, as uh, questions comes up, come up, please go ahead and um, ask away. And even if they're not on the subject I'm talking about, it might lead me to something else um, you know, that brings us back to the subject that we're talking about. So that's placing trades. And then moving to the next slide, getting into the trading plan. If I place a market order, I am now into the markets and I'm what I call naked. I don't have any protection in place. So what I like to put in around that is what I call an OCO, one cancels other. And really what it is, is it's a stop order and a limit order. Again, not guaranteeing where I'm getting out, but I'm getting out as close to those order prices as I, I can given the market conditions. So if I place it at market, I've got to very quickly go and put the next order in, which is a bracket order, a stop order and a target price that I want to get out for a gain. If it's a limit order and I'm defining what price I want to get in or at least close to that price, then when I set up that limit order, I can automatically set up that one cancels other, that stop order for a loss and that target order for a gain. So that's why I really like that limit because there, there's really no chance for me to not have a stop in place because it happens very, very quickly. So let's go and place a few of those orders. So we're going to switch the programs here. So I'll just pause for a second and we'll move right into the um, Interbank FX, IBFX MetaTrader 4 platform. So again, technical analysis. Look at today's range, all right? In a 24-hour period, let's see how many pips we move today in the pound. The low was 60.63 and the high was 61.28. So about 70 pips, not a huge trading range today. If I back this out and I show you what it was like on Thursday and Friday of last week, so we could get to... Here's the 7th, which was Friday. So the low price was 59.21, and the high price was, i got to move the panel here, my moderator panel. The high price was 60.33, so a little bit bigger, so over 100 pips there, 100, 110, 120 pips that day. Monday, pretty slow. Like I said, Monday was pretty slow. Equity markets were slow. Tuesday, a little bit more active in the equity markets, and the range was bigger, 59.87 to 60.80. So um, about, again, about 100 pips. Today, not so much, about 60 pips. So more days than not are kind of these range-bound sideways days, 60, 70, 80 pips. Very infrequently, we've had the days where we're at 150, 170, 130 pips. That used to be the norm in the pound. We used to move 150 pips at a crack, no problem. And now it's hard for us to move 100 or 120 pips. So um, last week, like I said, with the ECB talking, was a little bit busier. But this is what helps me define my trading plan. I'm using the, tr the, the, the software and the technology to give me a stop order and a target order, but I've still got to decide when and where I want to get in and how many pips I want to risk and what I want to go for, that's realistic. So a realistic trading plan today may be different than a realistic trading plan with an average range of 150 pips versus today an average trading range of about 60 or 70 pips. So it all goes to the markets first helping me to tell me what's realistic. I can't stress that enough. Let the markets tell you what's realistic. So. We're going to shrink this down. Most of you are short-term traders, and then we'll look at long-term as well. Um, but here's a five-minute chart. Maybe I don't think that there's going to be easing tomorrow. Maybe I think that the United States dollar is going to strengthen. And when I look at the long-term, 
Look at what the pound has done over the long term. So I could do a short term trade and a long term trade in the same location. Um, we're not doing you know specific technical analysis today, but I'll just draw a Fibonacci just to throw one up there, and I'll say maybe I believe that the the pound has run too far and it's going to stall out here before it double double tops up in the 63. 1.63 area. So I can go ahead and do a longer term trade and I can go ahead and go ahead and enter an order. If I enter in a market order, remember, again, the size doesn't matter for this. That doesn't really matter. Just the execution is if I go and do market execution, I'm going to sell it at the market. There, there, I'm short now the market. All right. But again, I'm kind of naked. I don't have a stop in place. I don't have a target in place. So before I did that market order, I was thinking, what's my trading plan? My trading plan is I'm going to use this old resistance as my exit. So I'm going to put my stop just above it. So I'm going to risk, as a longer term trader, I'm going to risk hundreds of pips to make hundreds of pips. So I got short the market at 61.13. My resistance up here at 62.70. I'm going to put my stop in around 63 even. I'm going to be willing to risk of almost about 200 pips, all right, 170 pips or more. And that's because I think that we're going to drop two or three or four pennies, and we're going to drop 200, 300, 400 pennies, uh, pips, um, as we go down because they're not going to do quantitative easing tomorrow, and the pound is going to be overbought compared to the uh, U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar in return now is going to start to strengthen. So I'm going to try and make 300 pips. So I go down to my order down here, and I go down to my trade, and I right-click on it, and I go ahead and modify it, and I put my stop loss up at 1.63, let's say 15, and I put my target price down at 1.5750. And I go ahead and hit modify, and now you're going to see it populate. Here's my stop, about 200 pips above, and here's my take profit, about 350 pips below or so, all right? So I can see it in there. That obviously be a long-term trade. I might not expect that to happen in the next few minutes or day or maybe even a week. It might take a while to shake out as a major fundamental event has changed, and I called it right, okay? That's, that's the reason behind that. But in this area, if I shrink it down now to a five-minute chart, I might still think that the market is oversold, is overbought as far as the pound goes, and ahead of tomorrow's meeting, I might be in and out in the next few minutes because I'm a short-term trader now. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to short the market, and this time instead of doing it at the, at the market, all right, I want to say I'm going to be a day trader for the next few hours, and so I'm going to use just this range that we're in right now. And I want to get short if it comes back up here and just test these highs right here. So I'm going to put in a limit order to get short at 61.20. I only want to get short if it comes up around 61.20. In a faster market, I might get filled a little bit above or below 61.20. There's no guarantees. So here's my limit order with a trading plan. I change this to my pending order, and I want to sell a limit order above the markets, not a guaranteed price, but somewhere around there at a price of 1.6120. So if the bid, not the ask, if the bid hit 6120, I'll be short because I'm actually the offer basically. I've got to wait for the bid to get there. And if that happens, I want to risk 10 pips. It's a very short-term trade. I'm just trading for the next two or three hours in this range and I want to get out at 6130. So if I'm short at 6120 and it goes to 6130, I'll lose about 10 pips. And I want to take a profit out 1.6120. 6109. Um, so I'm going to try and I'm going to risk 10 pips to make 11 pips roughly. And I go ahead and place that. So now I'm not short yet. I'm not short. The bid right now is at 6118.2. If it goes up another two pips, I'm going to be short. If the bid hits 6120, I'm going to be short. I have my 10 pip risk up here and I have my 11 pip gain down here. So that's what a limit order is, but the point is I predefined. I said I'm a short-term trader. I've got a lot of news coming out tomorrow. I want to watch this and babysit this, and I want to get short, and we might, well, we'll see if we get short while we're watching this, but I want to get short up right here where I believe there's a lot of resistance and it'll turn around and go back down. That's a very valid trading plan because the range right now isn't saying 50 pips are reasonable, 70 pips are reasonable, 100 pips are reasonable. It's saying if you get 5 to 10 pips, 
in this market being slow right now at this at this trading time, depending on where you are around the world, you know, it's the Asian session right now. It's pretty slow, um, tight ranges. That's very valid. So again, it goes back to using the charts to help me make realistic trading plans. And then I can adapt it and massage it. And that's what I want to show you here is the next slide. Whoops, let me minimize that and go back to the PowerPoint here. So the trading plan. So now I'm moving from the trading plan that I defined into managing the trade. I like to say massage the trade. I'm moving my stops. I'm always managing it. If I'm only going to risk 10 pips to make 11 pips, I'm not leaving. I'm not going to the bathroom and mill that trade. I'm not walking away. I'm not letting anything disrupt me because if I have a 10 pip gain and I was going for 11, you better believe it. I'm managing my trade, meaning, and let me show you this, I'm preparing to exit the at a market order or I'm preparing to what I call it leg out. So I'm going to show you that right now how I do that. So I know there's some questions coming through. So let me just finish this thought and then I'll just jump in. All right, so let me go ahead and um, just switch this application. Like I said, then I'll get to some of the questions. So if you guys want to type in questions, um, go ahead and I'll make sure I do it. So who knows, maybe we're going to be filled in this order by the time we get back here. Let's see. Uh, and it looks like we actually are short. So perfect. So we are now short at 61.20, all right? Um, so we're short, obviously, that market order because we did it at market. But I'm going to close that out. I'm going to close that long-term one out. So this is what I mean by, hey, I made a mistake. Hey, I didn't see that there was an economic number. I don't want to be short right now. I don't want to be it. I'm going to get out. So the one that we put in um, at the market order around 61.13, and we were willing to risk 200 pips to make 400 pips, I'm just going to right-click on it, and I'm just going to close the order. I'm going to get out of it so I only have one going right now so that you guys can see it. All right. So now we have the one live order, this kind of day trade order. I'm in at 61.20 short. I want it to turn around because I think it's overbought and go down. I want it to go, go down 11 pips before it goes up 10 pips, obviously. So what I mean by getting ready to exit the trade and babysitting this is, because this is a very short-term trade, and m maybe the markets are slow enough that after two hours, we might still be in a two or three pip range, and I'm done with my trading day, and I'm going to go get some sleep, or some of people have other jobs that support trading and things like that. You know, they want to keep funding their accounts, so they work. You know, not everybody just sits in front of the computers all day long. And they, they, they say, nothing is happening. This is a short-term trade. I can't leave this on right now and leave it to chance. I'm going to close it out. So if I want to close it out, I just right-click, and I just go to close order, all right? And, and that's it, and I'm out, at the, I'm out at the market. It'll take me out right now. But I'm not wanting to do that. I'm saying, hey, the goal is for this trade to start to work my way and start to go 61.19, 61.18, 61.17, 61.16 and start to go down. And so as that happens, I'm not risking my original 10 pips. If I have five pips of gain and I leave my, my stop in the same place, now I'm risking 15 pips, the original 10 plus the five that I've made, kind of my unrealized gain or profit. And that's kind of what's happening now is it's starting to move down and with the spread, we're getting closer to break even. So, okay, what I want to do is I want to modify it. I'm going to leave my profit down at 6109. But what I want to do is move my stop loss down. I'm going to limit my loss now to a little bit less. I'm going to move it to 6126. So instead of 6130, 6126. So now I'm really only risking about six pips instead of the original 10. I modify that, and you can see it move that red line down and managed it. So what I'm doing is as it's going my way, I'm getting ready to take to, to manage my risk and to start to maybe even leg out. And that's the next part is the leg out. As it goes my way, you know what? I've got 10 pips out of the 11. It's a slow market. 10 pips in these markets is very good. I'm very happy. I'm not going to worry about one pip. And you know what? I'm going to take off the bulk of the order. So I changed this to 0 0.35. I put on 0.5, basically a half of a mini lot, and now I'm just going to take off most of that, and I put 0.35 in, and I go ahead and close it. Now you can see that it changes, and I don't have 0.5 anymore. I have 0.15. So I like to do that personally. I like to leg out as things go my way, because again, whether, it's not, whether it was 11 pips was my original plan, and I got 10 out of it, hey, 
that's really good. I'm going to take most of it off, and then if it shoots down and gets me for the rest of it, great. But I'm moving my stops down, and I'm getting ready to close out the order. So a lot of the times, I've got my stop order, my target order in, but I'm just bring up this window, and I just keep this window open because I'm a short-term trader. The markets might be pretty busy and moving around, and I want to go ahead and get out. So I just hover here. And I just watch this. And what's cool about this, this IBFX platform, is I can see the bid and ask here. On the platform here, I just see the bid, 6120.9, 6121. So that's that red line here. The offer is right here. So I know that if I'm going to close it at market, if I'm short the market and I'm going to buy it back, I know I'm going to be buying it at 6124. And hey, I move my stop down to 6126. It's not going my way. I want to get out and I just close the order. So I hover here because can, I can do things quick. I don't wait and go, oh, I've got nine pips, oh, I got 10 pips, and then I come down here, and I got to right click, and I got to go to my close order, you know, I have it here hovering, so a lot of you are taking advantage of those trading windows that are within it, um, you know, within it, within the uh, actual platform, and I can show you that, but this is a way of basically trading very quickly by having the windows open, so I'll close that out, and now we're closed out of that last 0.15 of that mini lot, but I was just talking about having a trading window open. So this is one of the features of MetaTrader 4. It's kind of called one-click trading, if you will. And same thing, I can enter my lots. Um, I can put my stop loss and my take profit um, and, and put that all in there. And I can click and trade right from here. So whatever works for you, the bottom line is it all still comes back to your analysis and your trading plan and you managing the trade. That's really, really, really the important part. It doesn't matter how quick you are and how you're doing it and which way you're going to actually trade it as far as the platform goes, it comes down to a trading plan, obviously, and having good decisions back there, all right, behind the trade. So let me just pause for a second and move into uh, some of these questions. So one moment as I switch back. Let's see. So good evening, someone said, and the next comment, is this being recorded in the slides available to us to use after the seminar. Absolutely, I have about two dozen webinars that are recorded on the IBFX YouTube page. You can link there from my website or get through th there through the IBFX website. I'm going to give you the link actually. So this one which should be up on the website shortly as well on the YouTube page. So look out for it. So you'll have the slides, you'll have the entire presentation there to review. Um, what is the difference between a limit and a sell stop? So there are ways to take advantage of the markets as they go your way, meaning I think the markets are going to break out. We have a, a decision tomorrow, whatever it may be, and I think they're going to ease. Okay, If they're going to ease, in theory, that should weaken the U.S. dollar against the pound. So I think the pound is going to shoot up if that happens. So what you could do is you could put a buy stop or a sell stop so you could do that above the markets or below the markets and get in as the trend is going up it buys you in and gets you long as the market's going up. Or if the market's going to break and go down, you can get in going short as the market is breaking. So those are order types. For the most part, a limit is basically you're getting out, you're getting in or out above or below the markets. Um, and then the buy, stop, and sell stop is a, is a specific order to get you in as the market is moving in that direction and it keeps going your way. So remember, a limit order to get in if I want to buy a limit order, I'm putting that buy below the market. And hopefully the market is coming down to me, gets me filled, and then turns back around. Just like the trade that I just showed you, I want to get short at 61.20. The market was at 61.15. It came up to me at 61.20, hit me. Now I'm short, and I hope it turns around and goes down. Versus a buy stop or a sell stop those get you in going in that direction and keep going in that direction. So you're taking advantage of momentum versus I was saying, I believe there's resistance here. I want to get use a limit order to get short at resistance and hope it turns around. The buy stop would say, I believe resistance is going to be taken out and the markets are going to fly up. Buy me in as it's flying up and keep going in that direction. And then you get filled and then you put your stop orders and your target orders in. So that's the difference between those. Can you explain, ex um, another question, can you again explain that leg out process, okay? Um, and then again, I have a few other questions. So thank you guys for the participation and questions. It's perfect. That's, that's what makes this, uh, you know, I think, you know, so good is I want your guys 
to ask these questions because, again, it can lead to some other technicals. It can lead to other fundamentals. It can lead to other analysis. So I'm going to switch programs. I'm going to jump back in here. So legging out, again, like I said, um, let's say that I want to buy by market. I want to get long. I'm going to get long right now. All right, I'm now long the pound euro as it's going, or the pound U.S. dollar as it's going up, and so I bought, I bought, I bought it, and now I want to go down and modify my order. So remember, I don't have a stop order or a take profit in. So I'm going to put my stop loss in. This is a short-term trade. I bought it at 61.24. I put my stop in at 61.14. I'm going to risk 10 pips, and I'm going to put my target at. 1.6140, about uh, 16 pips above. I modify that. It goes in. Again, as the trade is going my way, I want to be prepared to go ahead and take some profit. So let me, to take some profit off the table, let me back this out so that you can see it. So there you go. So there's the order, is the green, I'm long, my stop is below it, my target is above it. As it goes my way, I'm, what I'm doing is legging out. I'm going to close the order. So I've got three pips in my favor, five pips in my favor, eight pips in my favor. As I'm doing that, I might be first modifying my stop and moving my stop up just a bit, and the markets haven't moved, so I can't move it too far. So I might move the stop up to 61.18 instead of 61. Um, you know, 14, so now I'm only risking about six pips. I modify it. Oh, I was going for 15 pips or 16 pips. I've got 12 pips. I've got 13 pips. Wow, it's really close. You know, I, I don't want to wait around for that last pip or two. I want to get out of it. I'm not going to get out of all of it, but I'm going to take the bulk off the table, so I'm feeling pretty good. I got it. I'm going to take off 0.25 of that 0.35, you know, or I had three standards on, and I took off two standards, and I, ha I leave one standard, whatever it is and I close it out. So you can see here, I still have an open order long, I just don't have as much. So that's what legging out is, is as it's going my way, I'm starting to take off some of the profits off the table, all right? Um, so, and then again, if I just want to get out at market and just say, I want to be out, I've got enough profit in it, it's right, it's getting close to my, you know, gain, or there's another announcement coming, you know, or like I said, I've got to go to the bathroom or whatever it may be. I don't want to leave it to chance. It's a busy market. I just want to go ahead and close the order, and I close it out at market, okay? So that's legging out, is taking off some of the order size at, you know, by you're manually doing it depending on how much you want to take off of it, depending on what the markets are telling you and why you're doing that. So moving back into the questions here, let's see if we have another one. What time of day would be good for day trading? Um, that person, I'm going to answer that question by going to the next slide, so just hold on to that, because I don't know who you are, I don't know where you live, I don't know, you know, what, what time frame is best for you, so I'm going, to, I'm going to help you that. I won't be able to answer that, but I'm going to help you, um, maybe, and give you some guidance of how to answer that. Um, will you show an OCO where one might, I'm just reading the questions, where, Right. Okay. So someone was just asking about going and placing orders in that direction, um, going with it. So basically what it is, is it's kind of like a straddle or a strangle. I'm an options trader as well. Um, and so straddles and strangles, we use that in options terminology. But you don't know which way the market is going to go, and you just want to go ahead and um, take advantage of it and going in, in one direction or the other. And let me just... I'm just entering everything in. Okay. So what I did here is basically I entered in the sell stop order. So I went to the trading window and I did a new order and I cl clicked down here to pending order and I clicked down to the sell stop. So I want to get in as it's going down. So right now I have a resting order right here at 6050. All right. 
and that's just a naked order, meaning if the market goes down and hits 60-50 on the way down, it's going to take me and start going with me. So I didn't place the rest of the order around it, but I could easily um, do that for you. So I'm just going to delete this order. All right. So I want to, if, if for some reason the announcement, I don't know which way the announcement is going to go. And this is the one thing that I, I really do stress, you guys. I don't like to guess. I like to trade off of good technical and good fundamental analysis and trading plans and support and resistance and a couple good indicators. And this is where people just say, well, I hope it goes my way. And if it gets me, it could keep going. So I don't mind you using these orders, but you have to use them based on a funda fundamental event. Told me it's, you know, what's going on now. And now it should keep going this way. It should break out of a support or resistance level. And that's why you're using it. So remember, don't use it because you just want to guess and hope it goes and gets you and keeps going. Use it because you're using the proper, the proper analysis. So if for some reason we thought the markets were going to go down, we would do a pending order. We would do a sell stop below the market, 1.6050. If it gets me short at 60.50 on the way down, I don't want it to go back up. So I put my stop in at 60.70 above the markets. And I want it to go down to 1.6000. I'm trying to make 50 pips. I'm trying to risk 20 pips. And I place that order. And it goes in. And it does not get filled until the market, until the ask price, not the bid, the ask price hits 60.50. I'm sorry, the bid price will hit 60.50, not the ask, because I'm trying to sell it short. So the bid price hits 60.50. I'm now short. And it's got to keep going down for me to go ahead and have my winner. So again, that would be on, you could use it if we break a resistance or a support level and you think it can keep going in that direction, that's how you can use it to get you filled on the way and keep going. All right, so hopefully that makes sense for you to be able to see that in, in action now. So if you want to get filled on the way down and have it keep going down, sell stop below the market. If you want to get filled and you want it to go up and keep going and trending up, you want to do a buy stop buy me in on the way up and keep going. So I know the terminology can be a little bit confusing. That's why this demo platform is so cool. IBFX's demo platform is exactly the same as a live platform. Play around with it. I don't like people day, uh, paper trading. I like them live trading. But if you're going to learn a new strategy or if you're going to practice physically entering the orders, practice doing it here, get over that hump and get right back to the live platform as quickly as you can. All right. So hopefully that that's help, helps you guys to see that. See, I didn't have that on today, but with all these announcements and, thing, and things like that going on, that can be a very valid opportunity as long as you're aware of fast markets and what can happen and no guarantees where you get filled and then making sure that you put the proper stops, the proper rewards in for that market at that very moment. So I'll just go ahead and delete this order. I'm just, even though I'm not live trading, I'm just so used to deleting orders. I don't like to leave anything hanging in there. It's kind of that um, OCD um, uh, personality, I guess, that, you know, sometimes I'll walk away from the computer and I'll turn it off and I'll go back and turn it on again because I just forgot that I really clear my order book and I sit there and turn back on, open up the platform again and check to make sure. And of course it's empty, but that's just kind of the personality is you just don't want to forget, you know, and so you don't want to leave anything to chance. So I'm always double checking to make sure that order book is empty. Moving back into the slides and moving back to wrap up here. Um, let's see if we answered all of those questions. So hopefully that was helpful for you um, with that buy, stop, and sell, stop order. So wrapping up, whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. Let me give you the big version of the slides. So that person who asked the, the best the question about when is it best to day trade. Again, I do very, very tailored one-on-one -on -one education. Um, and I don't know who's asking that. So the it depends on where you live and what you're doing. Maybe day trading isn't even for you. So what I offer the IBFX customers, an engagement interview, a free, no obligation, no pressure, 30-minute interview with me via Skype or via mobile phone. I ask you direct questions about your individual situation, and I give you my unbiased opinion in a nice Word document that you can read through that kind of gives you my suggestions to what is achievable given your situation. Some people find out that a lot more is achievable than they really thought given the markets, given their account size and experience and things like that and holdings that they have. Some people find out that given my opinion, they might be a little bit too um, uh, you know, optimistic 
given what the markets typically return. So it's your way of getting grounded. If you have questions on that for that person who says, when's the best time to day trade, I can help you and kind of give you my suggestion, giving my 15 years of experience trading and four or five years of, of consulting experience, you can email me and set that up if you want. Like I said, very, very relaxed, no pressure. And just to show you my website where you can read a little bit more about me, um, I can show you right here, Jupiter Peak Financial, where my market commentary is. Um, and then, again, it talks about the services I provide for individuals and businesses, uh, investment managers, and then various brokers out there that I develop um, some education for. So go ahead there and, and kind of pay attention because there's lots of great free content there that I do provide um, my clients and anybody who wants to take advantage of that. So please, it's free. Please take advantage of it. So wrapping up, fundamental events, I gave you kind of my opinion of what's going on, and it's not micro events right now, it's the macro, it's the governments, it's the central banks. Technical analysis, not too much today, um, plenty of webinars to look at technical analysis, but today the bulk of what we wanted to do was get you placing orders, get you comfortable doing that, and now you have a great webinar to go and review and watch this. And this is not the only webinar I've done. I have about two dozen webinars and lots of them go over this placing trades and managing trades. And just depending on what questions get asked, they all have a little bit different flavor to them. Talked about your opportunity with me, obviously, to learn a little bit more about your individual situation. Please take advantage. Links, I told you I would give you some additional links. Next uh, webinar is in two weeks. We'll be doing a quarter three review and a quarter four preview, kind of a macro, fundamental, and technical look at things. So we'll get a little more technical in that webinar than we were tonight. Education recordings, IBFX wants you to be educated. You'll be getting some, uh, a place to provide feedback after this webinar. Please tell them what you want to hear from collaborators like me and Raggy and the other people providing information. Let us get you the information that will help you be a successful trader. I post every day at dailyforextradingedge.com. Again, that's IBFX's site. It's the same information from my own site, Jupiter Peak Financial. So either one, a little bit additional and different things I do at Jupiter Peak, but for the most part, it's similar commentary. And again, there's the link to the IBFX videos on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search for Interbank FX or IBFX, and you'll be able to find it. I do post once in a while intraday commentary on the social trading site, IBFX Connect, um, and there's other collaborators there, such as Raggy, providing some commentary there, intramarket as well, intraday as well. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, thank you very, very, very much for uh, your um, participation tonight, your attendance, and please feel free to reach out uh, if you have any questions, you have my email right there. So um, again, thank you very much. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are around the world, and have a great, great uh, next day of trading.